All right, we are back. And I hope you enjoyed your short break. Got a little refill on your coffee, maybe another uh, muffin. We're ready to hear right now a very exciting report from our Ritual Moose Legion and Higher Degrees Director, Bob Neff. Thank you, Brother Director. Good morning, Moose members. It's time for our normal convention address. But let's face it, not very much has been normal for most of us recently. In some ways, the past few months has had us feeling like we were on an episode of the old TV show, The Twilight Zone. The Moose Legion had a decent year going along as we entered into 2020. Membership production had been pretty good and retention was as good or better than many recent years. We were thinking this year we had a realistic shot at an increase in membership. The coronavirus was not in our plans. However, about mid-March, it very quickly consumed almost every fraternal unit and most every member with unexpected changes to our daily routines. And they were not just minor bumps, but truly caused significant detours in our guidance systems. Our lodges essentially had to close, and that put the brakes on the Moose Legion and Women of the Moose functions as well, since most of them are held in our lodges. While some jurisdictions did hold their annual celebrations in early March, most missed the March and April window to get it done with closures and stay-at-home orders in most states and provinces across North America. Such unusual times called for unusual actions and adjustments to normal operational practices. Officers in all fraternal units, including directors of Moose Legions, were furloughed to continue serving at least an extra two months through June 30th. This was to provide the possible opportunity to get back together to hold nominations and elections as things were projected to open back up. And here we are at the end of June, and not everyone is yet open or knows for sure when they will be. During the period of lodge closures, many took the opportunity to do cleanup and fix up. Remodeling projects were accomplished by many lodges and our Moose Legionnaires were right there, shoulder to shoulder assisting. We saw heart of the community programs to include things like food and clothing drives, distribution of Tommy Moose, drive through Easter goody distributions, preparing and serving food to the community, and so much more. Our membership campaign this year is titled One Moose. It is about coming together and working cohesively as one unified group of members to make positive things happen. How very appropriate for the times we have found ourselves in. No doubt, our community leaders and neighbors have seen that positive example. They have felt the spirit of goodness and unselfish grace that the moose has put forth. It is said that we reap what we sow, and no doubt the dividends will come back to us, full measure, pressed down, and running over. That statement leads me into thinking and talking about ritual. No doubt, some of you recognize a line similar to that from years gone by. It may have been around a while, but the premise is still true. Indeed, we get back from that which we send into the lives of others. Ritual work and ritual competition have long been part of our history. However, it seems to be headed towards a lesser part of our future. There are less enrollment and conferral staffs today than in the recent memory of most. Going to other lodges, performing enrollments was always fun. Conferring new Moose Legionnaires was both enjoyable and enlightening as we discussed our accomplishments and future plans. Staffs working together to deliver a welcoming message to both new members and those of some standing has been a rich tradition. This year, we plan both Moose Legion and Lodge Ritual Competitions to be held in October. 
we have a Moose Legion conference planned in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, October 29th to November 1st. Along with ritual competition, we plan a few short informational meetings, a Saturday night banquet, and a Sunday morning conferral before heading home. But we also plan to have some fun and do some sightseeing. Among the attractions is the opportunity to visit the gravesite of Moose Heart founder, James J. Davis. We will take a bus ride over to the Flight 93 Memorial. Many of our fraternal units and members contributed to creating that memorial. This will be an opportunity to go visit and pay respects to those who were lost. No doubt some will visit a nearby casino or other local attractions as well. A cash bash to raise some funds for charity and provide us a chance to win money will be part of the weekend activities. An available souvenir book along with shirts, patches, ball caps, and more will help commemorate the event. Details have been posted on the website. Housing is open and parking at the hotel is free. Registration can either be mailed in or done online. We are looking forward to seeing many of you in Pittsburgh as we gather to enjoy each other's company and recognize some top ritualists. Welcoming new members into our fraternity and its higher degrees is one part of our program. Another attribute is retaining those we already welcomed into our fraternal circle. Frankly, we should be working more diligently at this and doing so all year long. We do have some councils of higher degrees who have been working with chapters, lodges, and Moose Legions to help retain our members. While most of them raise funds for Moose Charities and help support association projects and do much to recognize newly advanced members, retention is really the primary goal of these groups. Friendly phone calls, cards and letters all help. What might help the most is that contact that comes when we simply call to say hi and check on their well-being before we get to a point of trying to collect dues. Whether you have advanced to a higher degree or not, please get involved in helping to reach out and retain members. We also want to, re to mention rewards points here. Why, you might ask, well, we get those for serving as officers, attending training and conventions, and sponsoring members, right? Yes, that is all true. But did you realize you also get rewards points for renewing your own dues, as well as when a member you sponsored in the past couple of years renews their memberships? That should prove to be an incentive to get the original sponsors involved. For instance, a member I sponsored into the Moose Legion who renews gets me 250 points. A lodge or chapter member I sponsored gets me 600 points if they renew the first year and 1,000 points if they renew for that all-important second year. Cha-ching! Those points add up. You can renew your own dues with them. You can make a donation to Moose Charities or buy items from catalog sales. The choice is yours. Seems like a pretty simple slam dunk reason to reach out and retain members. Please check out the full details on the website and sign into the My Membership Record portal to see where you stand. Now, since we mentioned higher degrees, let's talk a little bit about those honorary levels. There are roughly 14,000 members who hold the fellowship degree of honor. The minimum criteria to be considered has changed very little over the years. It was at least five years of lodge membership and at least 10 members sponsored into the lodge, with at least one into the Moose Legion for several decades. That has been adjusted in the past few years to now be a minimum of just five sponsored into the lodge or chapter, and still just one into the Moose Legion. That has opened the door to a few more people, yet some members question the sponsoring requirements. However, we are very much a membership-driven organization. Membership is indeed our business product, 
and it just seems that everyone worthy of a higher degree ought to make this type of a minimum contribution. This year, we received some 573 recommendations from Lodge committees for advancement. Of those, 460 were approved and invited to a conferral at the Milwaukee Convention. Sadly, as we all know, that did not happen due to the coronavirus pandemic. Once we got back to the office on June 1st, we went to work addressing notices to send invitations to those individuals for the annual fall association conventions where they could get conferred. Unfortunately, it now looks like a few of those will not be taking place. We are looking at potential alternate plans and will make that information available. An approved candidate does get up to four invitations. Normally, the first is to international convention with the second to the fall association meetings. And the third and fourth invites are to the similar meetings the following year. Whatever takes place going forward, the Director General has made it clear that no one should lose out on the four opportunities to attend a conferral at some point. The invitations remain confidential until the member is actually conferred. We will work to do all we can to provide reasonable opportunities for all candidates. Following right along with that is conferral of the Pilgrim Degree of Merit. In the 102 year history of the Pilgrim Degree, there have been 91 conferrals. The 92nd opening of the Pilgrim Crypt was scheduled for May 23rd. Again, due to Corona, it had to be canceled to keep everyone safe. After all, most of the Pilgrim elders and many of the fellows approved as candidates would have been high-risk individuals. The Illinois guidelines simply would not and still will not let us hold a function of that size. The Pilgrim Council met remotely and decided to hold all candidates over to next year. They will join the class of 2021 at the 92nd opening on June 5th, 2021. It will no doubt be a spectacular class and a very full house of God that day. Plans are underway to be able to use the side chapels and most likely live stream the ceremony to them so more of the current pilgrims can participate. We will get it done. Now, if we may, let's turn once again to Moose Legion specific items and discuss some accomplishments. In the past year, we reported 4,830 Moose Legion applications sponsored by 2,315 members. That was very comparable to the prior year with no coronavirus at the end. We had 157 sponsors achieve the Moose Legion Five Club. The Moose Legion donated funds in their honor to the Moose Heart Equestrian Program. We also had seven Moose Legionnaires reach Sponsor of Distinction status by sponsoring at least 25 applicants during the year. They will get a special alternate award of being offered a One Moose Campaign shirt in lieu of the typical convention registration this year. 52 jurisdictions had all seven directors sponsor at least two applications to earn the Director's Key Club. That was four more than the year before. Another 92 individuals led by example and qualified in the Ambassador Division. That was five more than last year. We had 53 jurisdictions show an increase in members at year end. That is about 33% of our fraternal units. 24 more jurisdictions were within just 10 members and simply needed a little more positive retention efforts to have made plus one status. The Florida Association reported the most applications with 685, while Colorado ranked number one for applications based on per capita. The Top Moose Legion, Manatee, Florida, number 58, reported 222 accepted apps. Our top sponsor with 60 applications was William Hauser of Manatee, number 58, edging out Ronnie Douglas of Tar Heel, North Carolina, number 158, who had 55 apps reported. At the end of March, we were down just 726 
active members, or about 1.4% for the year. But corona hit, and everything just about stopped. Had that not taken place, we had a realistic chance of being plus for the year. Instead, we slid to being down 1,562, ending at 50,269 active members. As positive news, the Moose Legions were again very generous in their giving to Moose Charities. The Moose Legion has a history of overrunnages when it comes to fundraising efforts. Tomorrow, we will have a detailed report that will provide some overall accomplishments. Be sure to tune in and listen when our project chairman reports during our 9.30 a.m. presentation on Friday. We can't help ourselves on one detail, though, and have to spill some of the beans. We were at 13 years of annual endowment fund increases and were concerned as the year wound down how we would end and if we could generate another increase with corona hitting us. However, our amazing Moose Legions and our members came through and extended the streak to 14 years of increases. Thank you, Moose Legionnaires, for supporting our children and seniors. Please tune in tomorrow for the full report of who won what divisions and the overall total raise this past year. Three years ago, we began a new recognition program known as the Moose Legion Award of Excellence. Tomorrow morning, we will have a report detailing the top finishers this past year. The Moose Legion Council works to review various programs, consider code of rules proposals, and a host of general operational items throughout the year. They do so via email and Zoom meetings to stay current on actions to enhance the programs of the degree of service. They also work right along with our leadership in the local jurisdictions to help build membership. Each year, they have been achieving the key club, just as we ask local jurisdiction boards to do. This past year, the council sponsored 40 Moose Legion applicants and had a lifetime total of 1,060 membership units. They also collectively sponsored 67 lodge and chapter members during the year. Their lifetime accumulative total was 1,555 as of April 30th, 2020. The point is, they are not asking our members to do anything that they are not doing themselves. Unfortunately, we lost a councilman this year. Vice President Ashley Coffin had a short battle with cancer and we lost him in October. Ashley was from Sudbury, Ontario Lodge number 230 and Nickel City Moose Legion number 29 in Canada. Ashley was in the 100 division of the 25 Club and held the Moose Legion Medal of Honor. He received the fellowship in 2007 and Pilgrim degree in 2013. He will be missed. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Anita and to the Coffin family. The Moose Legion Council, with approval of the Supreme Council, passed a resolution to name Ashley as an honorary past international president. We were able to communicate that to him just two days prior to his passing. He was emotionally touched and expressed his sincere gratitude for the opportunity to have served. May he rest in peace. We also lost past international president Ralph West of California. Ralph was both a 100 division 25 clubber and earned the elite Moose Legion ring. He was awarded the fellowship in 1989 and pilgrim degree in 1998. He served as international president in 2004, 2005. Our thoughts and prayers to his wife, Karen and his family. We also lost another past international president, this one from Illinois. Dennis Dingsdale was very involved as a Moose and Moose Legion trainer for many years, especially concerning computer programs. He was a member of Antioch, Illinois Lodge number 525 and Northeast Illinois Moose Legion number 169, where he had served as secretary. He was a 250 division member of the 25 Club and earned the elite ring. Dennis received the fellowship in 1985 and Pilgrim in 1993. 
He was named an honorary past international president in 2005. Our prayers to Mavis and the Dingsdale family. Two past international presidents also lost their wives this past year. We lost Ruthie Wilson, wife of Bill Wilson, who served in 1999-2000. We also lost Laura Gallion, wife of Bernie Gallion, who was named an honorary past international president in 2018. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all these families. May they all rest in peace. We would like to introduce the current and incoming Moose Legion Council members at this time. Members who will continue service include Ronnie Serial from Illinois, but now in Tennessee, Charles Barber from California, and Daniel Gooch from New Jersey. Moving to junior past president will be Ken Miser from Arizona. Our incoming vice president will be Dan O'Neill of Orlando, Florida Lodge number 766 and Indian River Moose Legion number 178. Dan has been our project and awards chairman doing a great job. Our newest member joining the council will be Robert Helton Shaw out of North Carolina. Helton has a well-rounded background, having served as governor, Moose Legion president, state president, and served two years as ambassador among other positions, bringing much experience to the group. We will be saying goodbye to past International Moose Legion President Ron Maley of Pennsylvania, who has never quit and has served this council with great personal conviction since 2013. Danny Williams will continue to serve as secretary to the council. The 2020-2021 International President will be John Pro of Lakes Washington Lodge number 1865 and Western Washington Moose Legion number 17. John is a past governor, past Moose Legion president, past state president, was deputy supreme governor and has held a host of other positions. He has served on this council since 2016. And now we would like to welcome some remarks from our incoming International Moose Legion president, John F. Pro. Let's start over. Hello, everyone. I would just like to start off by saying, oh my, what a crazy year it's been. And we're just now hitting the halfway mark. So let's hope that the second half is far better than the first. I have to say I'm honored to have been selected to serve our Moose Legion as president. And I will do the best job I possibly can in these very trying times. I would also like to thank each of you for helping me achieve this position. I would especially like to say thanks to my lovely bride, Barbara, who has supported all my efforts in the last 26 plus years. It didn't matter what I needed, she helped. Even if it was just staying home and taking care of things in my absence. Thanks a million. I would also like to thank past International Moose Legion President and current Supreme Prelate, Paul Curtis, for mentoring me for this role and for recommending me to the council a few years ago. Thanks, Paul. Our countries and our fraternity have been hit really hard by this pandemic. Sadly, many businesses, including some of our fraternal units, may never recover. But we all must become one and ensure that we do everything possible to make the impact on our fraternity as painless as possible and take the necessary steps to ensure the survival of our twin cities, Moose Heart and Moose Haven. This effort has to be through our local lodges and chapters, and this is where our Moose Legion committees have to become stronger than ever. We are leaders, and we are the ones that make things happen. Therefore, we need to get involved locally, roll up our sleeves, and do whatever we need to do in order to ensure the survival of our lodges. If you don't have an active Moose Legion committee, I'm asking you to go back to your lodge governor and say, 
I would love to be the chairman and start having member meetings. I would like to remind you, if there isn't an active Moose Legion committee in your lodge, you might not get an immediate overwhelming response in attendance. But plant the seed. Keep trying and don't give up. If we talk about our Moose Legion activities and our contributions that we do for our local lodge homes, other members will want to get involved. I assure you. We are aware of the financial challenges that face all of our Moose units. As such, we have selected some lower cost projects this year in hopes that you will use the other revenue to assist your local lodges and your associations in their fundraising causes. This year, my project will be to raise money for a transport vehicle for Moose Haven. And the projected cost for this will be $30,000. That'll be the goal. The Moose Legion project will be the renovation of the House of God at Moose Heart with an initial goal of $60,000, which of course is a lot lower than the previous efforts. The biggest focus for this project will be to replace the carpet. Of course, we will always promote the endowment fund as a way to ensure the survival of our Twin Cities. I am sure that with your help, we will once again increase our year-over-year -year efforts. We have had declines in our membership numbers. We can't continue down this path, or someday we will be nothing but a memory. We just cannot let that happen. We, being the leaders, the movers and the shakers of our fraternity, must look around and see what it is we need to do to make our lodges a vital part of the community again, to make people want to become a value member. I have noticed in my own lodge, and I'm sure some of you have noticed this as well, our membership seems to run in cycles, depending on what is going on locally. For instance, we get a few members interested in playing softball in a league. They convince their players to join, and soon they are getting involved, and our lodge homes are flourishing with activities. Oh, then someone quits, the rest of the team follows, and our lodge homes become less active. We just can't let this happen and expect our lodges to continue to exist. Years ago, when I was the family activities chairman and my lodge was pushing to become a family fraternity, I had people tell me, well, yeah, we don't want kids in our homes, and so on. At that point, I reminded everyone, as a family center, we have to have activities to cater to all age groups, and the young and the old, and of course to the women, as well as the men. These are things we need to remember and make happen in order to attract and keep our members. As a Moose Legionnaire, we are members of a higher degree, and as such, we should be helping with retention efforts. That means being willing to come down to the lodge and make some phone calls to reach out to those members of both the lodge and the chapter that are currently in expired status and convincing them to renew their dues. We should listen to why they aren't current and take this information back to the lodge, chapter, Moose Legion officers. Sharing that information hopefully helps correct those issues, and results in getting those members back. No, we can't fix everything and retain everyone, but a little bit of effort does go a long way. And I'm counting on each of you to make that effort. As many of you know, I am a diehard University of Kentucky basketball fan. If you ever watch them play, they live and die by the three-point shot. That being said, every year I hear, let's shoot for plus one. 
And while that is a good, we need to think beyond that. As such, I say, let's shoot for three. Let's shoot for a plus three in our lodge, chapter, and of course, Moose Legions. And I am asking, no, I'm begging each of you to shoot for a minimum of three sponsored in each fraternal entity you are eligible to sponsor into. If we all focus our efforts, keeping this in mind, we will be back on the right path and we'll go to Cincinnati with membership pluses in our fraternity. In the next two days, we will have the opportunity to take another historic vote on our general laws. If passed, they will change the face of our fraternity forever and the time is now to make that happen. As leaders of our fraternity, we must all put our personal issues behind and focus on what is good and right for the fraternity as a whole. So as such, if you are a delegate, I am pleading with you to please do the right thing and cast the vote to make us one moose at last. With that, I will close with this. I am sorry I didn't get to see you all in Milwaukee and address the Brotherhood at both the breakfast and during the Moose Legion report, but things happened beyond our control. I would still love the opportunity to meet as many of you as possible. We ask that you all consider coming to Pittsburgh in the fall for our celebration there, and let's have some fun. If you can't make that, then please ask your local Moose Legions to consider making a request for an official visitor through Mr. Neff. If at all possible, I would be honored for the opportunity to visit your area. Thanks again for this wonderful opportunity and thanks for spending time with us. Fraternally, John. Thank you, John. We look forward to your year as president. Truly, we can do much to make our fraternity better, stronger, and more vibrant. It just simply takes creative thinking, cooperation, and working together. Our campaign theme this year is One Moose. That is way more than a general law's proposal. It is a mindset of cooperative thinking, the old adage of a burden heavy to one is borne lightly by many has never been so true as it is today. If collectively we strive to be humble and kind to one another, if we come together for mutual support and aid, if we just remember it's not all about us individually, we can accomplish a great deal. Working beside each other, Standing shoulder to shoulder, we can achieve many goals. We invite you to stay the fraternal course and take this journey with us, doing good for those we serve, especially for our philanthropic endeavors to support Moose Haven and Moose Heart. Everyone makes a difference. Please strive to make yours a positive difference with ours as we team up with President John and shoot for a minimum of three each. May God's grace be with each of us and may his divine blessing be ever present upon the entire Moose fraternity and all its members. Thank you for your attention. Brother Director General, that completes our remarks this morning. Thank you all very much for your attention. Awesome. Thank you, Bob and John, for delivering a terrific report on the Moose Legion ritual and higher degrees. At this time, we would like to honor a fellow Moose Legionnaire and pilgrim of our order with the reading of a Supreme Council resolution. Whereas the Supreme Council and all brothers and sisters of our Moose family desire to honor distinguished and outstanding members of our fraternity with a resolution recounting all of their true and excellent service to humanity. And whereas 
brother James R. Malsbury joined the Loyal Order of Moose in 1974 and the Moose Legion in 1975, holding membership now in Arcadia, Florida Lodge 1327 and South Florida Moose Legion number 46. And whereas he is a renowned Lodge and Moose Legion ritualist, having placed in top spots during international competition and qualified as a ritual judge in 1978, serving as an international ritual judge since 1985. And whereas Brother James is a past governor and past North Moose of our order, having risen to the 125 division of the Moose 25 Club and has earned 34 Legion Moose Legion membership unit credits. And whereas he received the Fellowship Degree of Honor in 1981, was conferred with the Pilgrim Degree of Merit in 1989, given the title of Honorary Past President of the Florida Bermuda Moose Association, was presented with the Association's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2017, and has lived up to his nickname, Grumpy. And whereas Brother Grumpy has served on the Association Fellowship Conferral Staff for many years and has conferred the fellowship degree at the International Moose Conventions for at least 10 years and has also served on the Florida Pilgrim Presentation Conferral Staff as Pilgrim Prelate. Therefore, be it resolved that the Supreme Council and those assembled for this 132nd International Moose Convention an annual meeting of the Supreme Lodge, do this day pay homage and offer our sincere appreciation to Brother James R. Grumpy Malsbury for the many contributions to our program over his illustrious career as a dear brother, friend, and loyal fraternalist. Now today just happens to be Grumpy's 90th birthday. So let's all join together and sing happy birthday. Uh, well, since it would only be me singing, let's just wish Grumpy another year of blessing and good health. Happy birthday, Grumpy. We love you, man, and we are proud of you and all that you've accomplished. God bless you, Grumpy. For this afternoon's session, we will hear the reports of the Heart of the Community Activities and Sports the Moose Heart Board of Directors, and the Moose Haven Board of Directors. The session will begin at 2 p.m. Central Time. The evening session will begin at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, and we will hear the reports from the Credentials Committee, Rules and Order, Director General, and Supreme Council, along with the nomination of Supreme Lodge Officers. Reminder that the Loyal Order of Moose Delegates registered for this convention can vote on the general law amendments by going to the general laws tab, delegates voting in the virtual convention website, right? You'll, as you go there, you'll see the general law amendments voting link. Click there. Voting remains open until 5 p.m. Central Time on Friday, June 26. So again, 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, enjoy a little lunch break, maybe a little brunch. And we will see you in a few hours at 2 p.m. Central Time. Thank you.